Say good morning. Good, sorry. Good afternoon. I'm from India. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Joydeep here, and I have along with me uh, Sheshu. So we are going to talk about uh, no Nodoop, which we are um, coining as not only Hadoop. So we will see how this uh, journey is, and also we will introduce you to something called as DAG. Directory uh, acyclic uh, graph. So these are the two things that we are planning to cover. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, what we want to see is how both of them is emerging together. How uh, the industry is emerging together, and both of these uh, things are coming together in place. Right? Okay. Let me just cross wait. So the key message here, what we want to talk about is, uh, we want to see uh, evaluation of Hadoop into big data. And then we'll introduce to you to DAG, what DAG is. And uh, we have tried to do some kind of comparison uh, between DAG uh, runtimes that we have. And then we'll uh, share some of the uh, uh, performance criteria. Uh, and uh, uh, finally, we'll talk about the results, uh, how things are now. OK? Now, let me get started. Uh, let me introduce a little of myself and the nature of work I do. So I am a solution architect. Uh, what I basically do is, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, I develop new applications for, uh, for our customers, uh, internal uh, Intel customers. So we do a uh, lot of these uh, activities in the designing uh, part. So as a uh, so so for for me it is very important for me to monitor the market and find out what's going on what's there in the market wh uh, what's no, new new things coming up so that i can give a competent solution to for our business uh, to, uh, give a, a, a complete business solution so so uh, so so that uh, we we are uh, we are uh, able to give uh, 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 the solution in terms of big data. Now, wh what we have done is, like two years back, we started our big, uh, big data journey. So we took a use case. We wanted to find out uh, how uh, Intel has a lot of presence everywhere. It has media presence. It has uh, web presence everywhere. So what we wanted to do is we want to collect all this data and do some kind of aggregations and all uh, 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 using Hadoop. Right, so we did it manually, and uh, it was kind of offline analytical solution. It was uh, working fairly good. Now, coming after two, two years, what we are seeing is this offline solution is no more uh, required. So, if you want to design the so same solution uh, coming today, we do not, we, we cannot uh, sustain that uh, offline solution. We need something real time. We need something which is. Uh, uh, on a real-time basis, uh, uh, and uh, we need to make sure that we, we get real insights immediately. We cannot wait for one day for all the data to be processed and then uh, get our sentiment analysis or any customer journey thing. So all these things uh, is making uh, kind of uh, HDFS and MapReduce together, coming in together, is the relevance of both of them together coming is uh, uh, is not that good in, in the today's world. So wh what we are seeing today, uh, that the data is getting mashed up uh, on a real-time basis. The data is coming at very fast speed. We need to adopt that data and then process the data and give a near real-time uh, analytics. So data is coming on a continuous. We need to make sure that data ingestion is happening continuously. Data processing is happening continuously. Plus, uh, our uh, insight has to be uh, on a continuous basis. So that complete, uh, in, in two years, there is a complete sh shift on how things were done and how things is today. So this is what the business perspective of uh, making uh, Hadoop uh, relevant, irrelevant in today's day and how things are, new things are coming. OK. So let me go to the next slide there. So this is what we are seeing big data today. So if you see, we have transformed from Hadoop to big data. So what we are seeing today is we have 
different processing models, which was there like earlier what we used to do is we used to do a batch processing, get all the data, do a batch process uh, on some unstructured data and do basically some aggregations and using MR paradigm, right? Now things have changed totally. So the processing model is no more batch, so it's near real time, it's in memory uh, uh, that is coming in. Uh, similarly for analytical model, it's no more aggregation. We need to uh, do machine learning, we need to do graph graphical modeling and stuff like that. Again, the storage model has evolved uh, in a different way. So we, we are not doing only unstructured text analytics. Uh, uh, you know, storage, we are not doing only the text. So we are uh, storing columna like Avro, Parquet, various formats are coming, okay? So again, the language is also evolving, uh, evol uh, uh, means uh, evolving. So there are so many new languages are coming. So all these things is what we as Intel think that it's, a, it's uh, uh, from uh, Hadoop, Hadoop to big data. This is what for us big data means, okay? So we, what we are sh uh, seeing is we are shifting right from left, which, which was catering very good for last, uh, means last two, two, three years back, it was pretty good, but now it is irrelevant uh, for us. We have to uh, go, uh, go right and adopt the new technologies so that we can uh, serve our business in a better way. Now let me introduce you to two things here. How MapReduce was and what is directly uh, acyclic graph means. So what we have done here is we have taken a simple select statement with some aggregation, where clause and aggregations, and then uh, uh, generated the plan out of it. So if you see in the uh, left hand side, uh, the, uh, the MR uh, uh, plan and on the right hand side is the DAG plan. So if you see in the uh, map reduce, uh, whenever we uh, do this plan, it is divided into stages. So which basically means if stage it runs in sequential, it doesn't run in parallel. So whenever uh, stage one completes, the data has to be staged into the disk and then uh, the stage two uh, can begin. So that's, that's where, uh, that was a uh, thing that, that is there for MR and that's making it really slow. But we are going to look at something like DAG which would be really fast, and how we can do this? This is uh, using, uh, so that the data should not persist in the disk. So it has to be uh, in, as a pipeline. So if you see on the right side, I have uh, uh, generated a, a drill plan. So if you see this, data is taken once, uh, read once, and then all the processing is happening on pipeline. So the data from one, uh, process to the next uh, process is passed as a pipeline. Uh, the transformation is happening on the fly, uh, any kind of uh, transformation, and uh, there is a continuous data flow. So it's not sequential anymore. It's kind of trying to do parallel things. So that's where the basic difference between MR and uh, DAG is coming. So if, if you see in the Hadoop, so uh, in the previous slide which I have shown is HDFS was there, as well as MR was there. So HDFS is catering our needs pretty good. So they are able to uh, come to all the challenges of storing any type of data, but main problem that we are seeing is on the MR side, the processing is really slow. How can we make it faster? So this is kind of answer to this, but uh, to uh, tell that uh, DAG is the best thing to do, uh, we, we need to come out with proper data. So we. Uh, in this experimentation, we have tried to f find out what DAG is, how, how can we, uh, uh, wh how, uh, how does it s suffice our need, and uh, uh, overall, right? So with this, what we have done is, we have taken uh, MapReduce or Hive as our uh, baseline, and try to evaluate with each other of these uh, products like uh, Spark, Pres uh, Presto, uh, Drill, and other stuff together, and then see how the result was. So we tried to do this experimentation based on two parameters. One was the completeness of the product and one was about the performance. So we, uh, based on these two parameters, we have tried to uh, do this uh, uh, study. So if you see this, th we have 
taken uh, 12 parameters uh, on which we have tried to score our, uh, uh, each of these runtimes. So uh, uh, say for example, we, we try to see if uh, the product is uh, uh, HDFS compatible or not. So if there is some uh, proprietary uh, database or uh, file system, uh, uh, we would not be able to integrate with HDFS. So we wanted to check uh, uh, some of the parameters like YARN integration. So we have uh, our resource manager. We don't want to, again, buy one more resource manager and invest uh, uh, for uh, uh, for our storage computer uh, or, or any any other resource management thing. So similarly, we have uh, taken a look at security. We have taken at ease of use, uh, like uh, how how easily we can monitor or maintain our systems uh, on DAG runtimes. So based on that, uh, this is what it shows. So we have put a score of zero to four. Based on this zero to four score, uh, what we have done is. Uh, uh, the total score of 25, so 12 parameters, uh, sorry, 48, 12 parameters we have uh, seen. And uh, what we have seen here is Spark is uh, looking good. And uh, we'll talk about, about each of this product in the coming slides. But uh, uh, what we wanted to, uh, what we have uh, done this completeness score is purely based on our judgment, plus our experience, plus our, uh, the literature and the documents that was available. Okay. So with this, I will hand over to Sheshu to go through the next set of slides. Thank you. Thanks, Shubhi. So this is Sheshu. Thank you. Um, can I speak in both the microphones here? It's not echoing, right? Okay. Um, thank you. So yes, we have actually taken 12 of those parameters. And like Joydeep rightly said, you know, we don't want to invest in another infrastructure, in another resource manager other storage engine to actually integrate uh, and lead down a path of basically, um, you know, a diversified portfolio in our, within our enterprise. Um, and we use a Likert rating, a zero through four, and it is purely subjective, certainly it is, but that subjectivity had certain objectivity behind it because we physically installed, ran through the exercises to make sure that the literature claims were not simply um, uh, literature claims. Right, we, that we had them validated and these were indeed the scores speaking for them. One disclaimer I have to make here, guys, we will do a bait and switch in this exercise. Uh, the Flink one that you're seeing, we will not have parametric results for them. Uh, in the slides, we wish we could get them, but you know, I will give you excuses outside after the talk, um, but, but take that for what it's worth right now that we did do the evaluation, the numbers are just not um, presented in this slide deck. Right. So what we do find, uh, purely from a completeness perspective, when I mean completeness, we're really talking about functional completeness and how well it will fit within our enterprise, our existing Hadoop cluster investment that we have. Um, uh, what comes highest is, of course, Spark, you know, 42. And, and um, you know, the total score that you have is, uh, is out of 48. Okay? Now, people might argue exactly, you know, why did we use equal weighting through this process and so on and so forth. You know, that's always up for debate, but we wanted something that was um, uh, per se unbiased. Okay, we also have performance criteria actually to prove them. So, so again, like uh, there were three um, uh, imperatives to qualify something as uh, quote unquote uh, DAG. Um, one of the first characteristic is that we want the data to continuously move from one stage to the next stage without having to stage on disk. Second, you don't want the source or the sync of the data, the intermediate data to be on disk. You want it to be in memory, right? And so, so you can actually um, get the performance improvements and that you're not hitting the plateaus after all. Uh, the third, and that I don't know if it became clear, was that in traditional MapReduce, we really meant MapReduce. You know, the functional programming skills uh, or, or styles that we're all used to, which is map function, and then there's a reduce function with possibly a combiner or something in between. Uh, were the only two available for your disposal. But the moment you actually have continuous directed SQL graph pipelines where the data is being read from the disk, possibly in a sorted fashion and so on, you can now apply higher level rel relational primitives like joins and sorts and groups and so on and so forth, even as the data is coming through the disk and, and flowing through the transformational pipeline. So those three are the characteristics, staging in disk, you know, better functional programming primitives than, than are available and continuous transformations as the data is actually traversing through the pipeline, right? So the performance comparison, we actually used uh, six use cases. 
Um, four of these are pure relational TPC-BS kind of queries. And the reason we chose this mix is because four of them, most of our workloads are still traditional aggregate operations using relational operations and so on. So four of the six queries we've used are six uh, are TPC-DS queries uh, doing factual to join, uh, or factual joins with dimensional data, doing aggregations on factual data and so on and so forth. Uh, and we do have, by the way, within the backups of these slides, we do have the results of what queries we executed and so on and so forth. Uh, but two of the use cases are quote unquote per se advanced, okay? And the two advanced use cases I want you to pay attention to is the fact that we did text analytics exercise and we did a log analytics exercise. For text analytics, what we were really doing was taking unstructured text, in our case, Twitter, you know, tweets that come from a Twitter source API, and we were trying to convert them into term vectors, right? I mean, it's fundamental stage for you to do any kind of sentiment mining, clustering, classification. What you may for advanced analytics, you need to be able to take an unstructured piece of text, tokenize it, pivot the words, count up the histogram, and basically generate vectors, right? So that was one of the, ex the, the advanced analytics use case we've chosen. And the sixth use case was blog analytics. Weblog analytics is what we mean. Um, so where we were looking at the traffic patterns on our web servers to look at how much time a particular user spent on a page before requesting the next resource. And so those are the six use cases we report here, and we will drill, drill, into, um, drill further into the results. Um, and by the way, I don't know if you noticed, this is where I'm saying, uh, you don't see Flink there, do you? Okay, so that's where my excuse and disclaimers come into play. So I will have results out for you if you come out and I can give you all the excuses for it. But please take the disclaimer. Okay, so we wanted to kind of drill down into individual results of how they perform. By the way, what by Hive, I really here mean map reduce Hive. I do not mean uh, Hive on Tez. Okay, um, I, I, I do see, I believe Nitin here. I know he works on Tez implementation. So. Unfortunately, we could not do it because we couldn't keep the same of them on the same cluster, if you will. We were trying to run this on CloudRAS distribution. Uh, but the key takeaway from the Hive is, Hive established a map reduce, established a baseline that we could now compare other DAG runtimes with, okay? Uh, key takeaway from this is that all queries completed successfully, and that's the beauty of Hadoop, right? Hadoop, sure, I mean, one of the customers, customers keep telling us, sure, I have real-time data, I have complex event data. I need to process this in near real time. We tell them Hadoop and they come back and say, well, Hadoop is slow. Well, it's slow, sure, but it's actually reliable. It runs all the six, query, uh, six queries we ran on it dutifully without any kind of much belaboring on the queries or rewrites and so on and so forth. Okay, um, so this is just the baseline, no key takeaway per se from that slide. Spark. Um, Spark again is uh, all queries completed successfully. Now um, we can we can debate about whether Spark is a true DAG on the three characteristics of continuous, you know, in memory and relational primitives. I'm not so sure about the relational primitives as much. Now someone who is from say Databricks or UC Berkeley can opine better on whether it is truly a DAG by those three criterion. Uh, but one of the one of the key takeaways was that Spark did actually complete all the queries successfully. Um, and that, you know, we, we saw some anywhere between 2x to 8x. Don't cite us exactly on those numbers. It was an eyeball test. <laughs> so, so we saw a 2x to 8x improvement. But one of the fundamental challenges that we actually faced with Spark, and treat it as we, what you may again as challenge or as possibly an advantage of Spark, is that you actually have this ability to do mixing SQL programming with RDD programming, right? You know, some people come from traditional ETL world and they understand RDDs quite well. Some people come from relational ad hoc query world and they understand SQL quite well. And so there's certainly, certainly that friction or that kind of, um, uh, you know, polar shift, polarity shift between the two individuals. The fact that Spark provides both of these constructs uh, for both of these personas is wonderful in my opinion. Um, Another uh, key takeaway from the Spark perspective is uh, we could not actually uh, run log analytics function uh, without refactoring the code, right? What I mean by uh, run the, uh, the windowing functions, I want you to pay particular attention to why we needed window functions. We were trying to measure the time spent by a user on a web page, you know, basically to understand the customer journey and the hotspots in our page for us and so on. 
right? And so we wanted to use window functions of the leads and the lags to identify the time differences, and we executed that through Spark, SQL, yeah, well, it failed, it did not support window functions. And so now we had to jump back from what was otherwise a very easy SQL dialect back into an RDT dialect and actually run through reduce by key operations to identify the time differentials and so on, okay? But, but if there is anybody from UC Berkeley and Databricks here, you know, please take note that's a desirable feature we wish to see sooner than later, just so you can check that off and make all the six parameters really go thumbs up. So to, to run log analytic functions, at least our criterion was that you need to support window functions to make my developer burden quite easy. Okay. Impala is uh, a true in-memory DAG. Okay, so yes, the, the data is read from the disk and streamed continuously through the, all the nodes within the cluster and ultimately surfaced onto the screen or directly written to the disk, if you will. So it is true an in-memory DAG and it was substantively faster, 20x than Hive being the baseline. Um, but one of the key takeaways here was that Impala could not run text analytics examples, okay? Here is another gotcha. For log analytics, you need window functions. But for text analytics, you need to take an unstructured text, split at the word boundaries, and pivot the word so you can count up the histogram counts. Uh, very simple operation. You need basically a function like split, you need lateral view, you need explode, and so on and so forth. And Impala does not support it. Therefore, we could not run text analytics. Now, unfortunately, at least I did not have the skill to be able to write, rewrite that into a native UDF. I could, I'm lying. But, you know, I didn't want to. No developer, no enterprise developer would want to basically invest, you know, additional burden when you see some feature that is basically an accepted standard across the industry missing. So Impala was certainly missing these table generating functions and array processing functions, which basically enabled the text analytics function to not run successfully. So two key takeaways, log analytics need window functions and text analytics need array and UDTF, the UD, uh, user defined table generating functions and so on, okay? Uh, next on the list is drill. Uh, we were pleasantly surprised by how much um, it has changed from when we looked at it last year to when we looked at it this year. Um, substantially faster, 5x to 50x faster. On the, on the four relational queries, no one had difficulty. Of course, these are all SQL and Hadoop tools for all I care. And so they actually do execute very fast, very nicely. Uh, but for the, the, the two functions, the text analytics and log analytics, they do not support the table generating functions. And that basically renders drill to not work with text analytics use case that we have. The window functions, the, the literature claim certainly says it's out there but it was very beta, and we actually ran through those exercises, it simply kept failing on us, right? We tried to reverse engineer it and re-engineer it and so on and so forth, and we kind of gave in, because we didn't want to go through that laborious exercise. Like I said, my imperative was to make it easy on the customer. My imperative was to make it easy on the, on the enterprise for adopting some of these DAG runtimes. The fact was, you know, both text analytics and log analytics use case on drill had actually failed. However, one of the beauty is, you can see, look at the, look at the DAG that truly explains how things are progressing, right? I mean, I can actually read that graph and clearly articulate what's happening in what stage. Is it going through a sort operation? Is it going through a grouping operation? Is it going through a filtering operation? Is it going through a hash join operation, a broadcast join, a merge join? It, it gives us transparency into how the data is being read from the disk and how it's trickling down into an analytical insight at the end of the day. That was quite beautiful, frankly, that it actually renders that. Now, if, again, I mean, I don't mean to take this, uh, give this as a criticism, but if, if Hive were to actually provide me this DAG in a much visual fashion, more power to it. Spark, yes, it's a DAG runtime, I know, but most of the things I see on the console logs are things like run job, uh, flatten RDD, and so on, where I now have to make an interpretation between what that physical operator is doing to the logical operation that I asked it to do. And that disconnect certainly needs to be filled from a visual perspective by the developer, if nothing else, okay? Presto, so we ran Presto. Again, very impressed with Presto and how it's evolved. Certainly Presto was um, mature last year, and this year, um, you know, again, we were thoroughly impressed in, in how well uh, it executed. Again, the four relational uh, use cases, no questions whatsoever, everything ran quite well. Uh, we saw up to 60x improvement in some of those use cases uh, compared to the baseline of five. Table generating functions not supported, okay? The table generating function is to basically split the sentence and therefore text analytics use case could not run. 
Okay. However, the window functions were mature and they were compliant with what Hive queries were. We had to do very little rewriting, if any. And they ran fine. The log analytics, you can see how quickly it ran um, uh, compared to Hive. Um, one point I did forget to mention here is in Impala, uh, by the way, we tried to rewrite at the bottom left corner, you will see how it performed in comparison with the rest of the runtimes and we tried to bring the leading contender to the left so it's easy for reading. I'm not sure it's really easy, but we tried. Um, but you'll see actually Impala ran possibly maybe, you know, what, 4x slower than Hive? Oh, wait a minute, Impala was supposed to be an in-memory DAG abstraction. What happened there, right? And so we kind of peeled in and we were like, you know, that can't be true. It can't be true that, you know, a DAG, uh, a non-DAG processing from disk is faster than a DAG processing in memory. And so when we looked at the data, what we observed was at least the web log samples that we took, there was heavy skew. There were bots and so on and so forth. And we hypothesized, at least my personal hypothesis, is that Impala was trying to dutifully load the entire window into memory as opposed to just the lead and the lag window, okay? If I'm not speaking to a few of you that don't know the lead and lag window, basically you only need to look at one row before or one row after in order for you to compute the time differential. You don't need to pick up the entire window into memory. And I believe that's what happened where the cluster was really thrashing back and forth. Um, so, so window functions could certainly be improved as well. If someone from Cloudera is here hearing my message, you know, at least I would like to have a deep debug session to understand why the performance was actually slow. Presto uh, beautifully worked, and at the bottom you can actually see the DAG rendering, right? And 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 um, you know it, it, that gives you the skew in the data. You know how many records are being read from the disk, how many of them are being broadcast. You know how were the hash partition and so on, and that's quite beautiful to look at. Okay. Now, HPCC systems is another one that we evaluated. How many of you know what HPCC systems is? Okay, I guess I'm the only one in the room. That doesn't speak too well. But I am biased, I'll admit that. HPCC systems is actually a high performance computing cluster that was developed by a company called Sizint that was later acquired by LexisNexis, which is a, a DAG engine that was developed in C++. Uh, was founded originally in 2001 and open sourced after Hadoop started to take over the market, open sourced only in 2011 time-ish, okay? Uh, I am biased because I actually worked with LexisNexis before I joined Intel. So I, I drew that thing in, so <laughs> I am biased. But HPCC systems, the reason we pulled that in is because uh, it, it's truly a DAG and that's when I first got introduced to what DAG meant and what MapReduce meant back in 2007 and that was the beauty of it, right? So, so the results from HPCC, um, all the six queries actually ran, both your relational structured aggregate operations as well as possibly uh, advanced analytics use cases actually ran successfully. Uh, it is on disk DAG runtime, so we did not have any issues per se with reliability. Uh, we did face a few issues with reliability on other DAG runtimes, you know, they, it, we couldn't repeat the exercise because they were overcommitted on the memory and so on and so forth. So we had to do a lot of tinkering around with those memory constraints. Uh, whereas because HPCC was DAG aware and disk aware, it actually executed all these six workloads quite successfully. Um, one unfortunate downside is it uses very expressive language. The language is called enterprise control language. Looks very much like SQL, you know, you basically apply the same kind of relational primitives, uh, filtering primitives, join, sorting primitives, and so on and so forth. Uh, it kind of looks like a data flow language, right? Uh, but it's not SQL. So now we're forcing on our developers a new language dialect that they need to learn, which unfortunately isn't the right thing to do. Um, but it's very expressive, okay? Uh, another downside for HPCC systems, if there is anybody, not that you guys know about HPCC systems, so if there was anybody from, I can pick up the phone and call them. They do not play natively with HDFS. So if you are actually bringing your Kafka data, your near real-time complex event data, uh, in through a Kafka bus, possibly into a HBase stream or into a HDFS source and so on and so forth. Can you immediately run a text analytics operation on it? No, unfortunately not. You'll have to then make a physical copy of this data back into the proprietary format of, H uh, of HPCC before you run the analytics operation. Now, they tell me that they're actually bridging that gap with a H2H connector. Uh, that connector is merely copying the data. It makes it easy to copy the data transparently from Hadoop distributed file system into the HPCC system. 
but it still is actually making a in copy, and we do not want that to happen. Okay. Uh, again, like I said, you know, back in 2007, you know, I looked at this and I was like amazed. Ah, cool. I mean, so it can read 30 billion records on 30 nodes, one billion each, and process it through. Now I can actually do a mapping between logical process with the physical process and see how the data is skewed. Um, and so uh, it's always used DAG if you want. Okay. So anyway, we, you, what you did not see here is evaluation of Tez and, uh, and Flink. Now I'll give you the excuse. We were three of us actually, three musketeers doing this, uh, this evaluation. Uh, one who is an expert in the other two systems has kind of bailed on us. And so we figured it was only appropriate for him to speak about it and provide the results in the backup section than for us to actually misspeak about any of those results. But the findings are not changed nonetheless. The findings are quite simple. We started with a very simple problem description. Both of us are solution architects. We support our customers coming in and saying, I would like to run this use case, this big data use case that requires near real-time latency uh, of, of my ingestion, near real-time latency of insights, near real-time latency of processing. And they were telling us Hadoop is slow. And so we looked at it. We said, no, HDFS caters quite well to your storage formats. But MapReduce, I understand, is because it's disstaggered right now, can be slow. And so we set out to see if these so-called new runtimes can actually replace Hadoop's MapReduce component. Uh, and the findings, you know, I can't give you an authoritative findings on what we are really seeing. So, so a, a problem context was, can DAG meet the demand um, and, and the performance, the capability demand and the performance demand? Um, the findings are DAG runtimes are still maturing, right? Uh, if we thought Spark was actually delivering all the six use cases, it truly wasn't a DAG in the first place, and then it certainly left something to be designed in terms of visualizing the DAG. Um, and we saw, uh, you know, I'll be very honest with you, we saw quite a few executor lost failures. We saw cryo serialization problems. We've seen, uh, you know, uh, out of memory over uh, out of memory errors and so on and so forth. Certainly, it did run it, but it required exercise from. Uh, it wasn't a self-service DAG runtime. Okay. Um, the other one certainly lacked certain features like window functions, you know, they, they lacked, uh, you know, table generating functions. Um, and they were more catering towards somehow SQL language compliance, which is a great thing. I'm not, I'm not dissing that process. But I think they also need to focus on not just aggregate relational queries, they also need to focus on advanced analytics queries. So whether it is text processing, whether it's log processing, whether it's building a classifier on, you know, on near real time data. I think some of the focus also needs to be, be placed there as opposed to pure SQL language compliance. Okay, um, but the, the, the key findings were they are still maturing, Spark comes closest. And for everyone else that did not come closest, this is a message, a humble request, treat it as what you may, to fill those gaps, make it functionally complete, and make it more performant. Performance was never a question, you know, certainly DAX performed better, but it was really, you know, can you make this also functionally complete with the six imperative services in other? 12 imperative services in other. Okay, so, so we started the journey saying, you know, are we in a world of no dupe? We started with no Hadoop, okay? And we come to the conclusion, no, it's not no Hadoop yet. It certainly is no, not only Hadoop, at least for this year it is. Um, and so we'll continue to basically see what was a pure left polarized strategy of Hadoop to a, a right-centric big data ecosystem also contain Hadoop alongside all of these DAG runtimes to truly deliver you that performant, capability complete uh, processing framework. That I believe completes the, uh, the oil where certainly we've included the queries that we executed. Like I'm saying, four of them are TPCDS. Yeah, we had to tweak the namespaces and so on and so forth. We had to rewrite certain some syntaxes, but nothing beyond reach. For the other use cases, we were simply doing text tokenization and, and windowing functions to compute the time differential. We will publish them at the end of the, in, in, in the slides. And if you don't find them here, we'll also publish an, uh, an, uh, an Intel white paper releasing all these benchmarks out to the industry. Thank you, thank you. Any questions? Oh, no, I did not try that. No, we, we, we will certainly try. A again, this by no means, I don't know if, we, if I mentioned it, but we didn't mean to be biased towards these six runtimes or anything. 
we went with whatever came our way. The, the intent is certainly to complete evaluation on all of the products that claim to be DAG. Thank you. Did you consider using PIG? PIG? Yeah, PIG would be another map reduce. We, we, uh, we did not really evaluate the spark build or whatever in order to make sure. Remember, there are three imperatives, right? One of them is relational primitives, in-memory processing, and continuous data flows. And PIG failed on two of those aspects, you know, continuous data flows as well as in-memory processing. And so we didn't really consider that, let's say. The, what about the PIG on TES? No, we have not tried it. Like I'm saying, you know, TES required a separate Hortonworks engine or something, a new flavor of cluster for us to actually do apples to apples comparison. And so we will actually rebuild that cluster, the one that we did the evaluation on, put the, put the Hortonworks build, the optimized build, and rerun all of these evaluations. Yes, thank you. Okay. Oh, the cluster is actually a four-way cluster, four nodes. Uh, e mm -hmm. Pretty small. And we use the TPCDS with a scale of 250, basically generating about, I believe, 30 or 40 gigabytes of data, factual data. Um, and each of this node had 64 gigabytes of RAM, but we'd only assigned six, 32 gigabytes towards in-memory DAG runtimes. Yeah. Did you consider only op open source engines? Yes. Okay. Yes. That was because, you know, we don't want to push one behemoth and bring another behemoth that we basically will have to support long term and, and pay money to do it. Uh, the reason is uh, I work for a company called Data Torrent and mm -hmm. uh, we just announced open source last week. I remember so meeting you la in last so Hadoop Summit too. Yes. Yes. I just came to be aware of it. We will absolutely put that on, put that yeah, on the list. Because it's also. DAG based. Uh, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Libraries. So why couldn't you try it in your cluster? I mean, you probably need some tuning parameters like height site, page site, but it's just a client side library. You just need to put it in the class path and in the HDFS. Which one? Which one? The what? Taste jars. Oh, taste jars. So no, we, we, we could certainly do it. So but you could try it in your whatever Cloudera cluster that you have. Yeah, yeah. But again, you got to remember when we made the proposal to FVR, where we are now, you know, we didn't just didn't have the time to swap out the Cloudera components and then put Hortonworks components in. Get the picture, right? I I'm mean, giving you an don't excuse. need any cloud Hortonworks components, right? It's just the set of No, the test libraries. Yeah. The test libraries certainly will require you to be 14 compliant and so on, right? Uh, I believe we were using Hive 13 one, right? Hive 13. Okay. What were we using? Because like Hive on MapReduce, everybody compares to Hive right. on MapReduce and it's not even a fair comparison. Correct, correct. No, but, but don't take that to be Hive. Again, we didn't mean to bash on Hive. We were wanting to establish a baseline first, a MapReduce baseline, and then see how DAG performed against that. Okay. Right? So don't read that as Hive. Read that as MapReduce, please. But we didn't, I, I have the skills, but I didn't want to go through the skills of writing a join operation myself between factual data to dimensional data. I didn't want to go through writing a Lucene UDF that took an unstructured piece of text, tokenized it, and built a term vector out of it. Do I want to go through it? Sure, maybe some other day, but not today. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I believe we actually posted it into it. Let me get to that slide. Ah, there it is. I believe, yeah, Hive is 13.1. Uh, drill is 0.9 and Impala is 2.1.0. Thank you. Hey, thank you for the card. Appreciate it.